So, today is the 9th of April, 2022, and uh, I've got all of these frames beveled now, at least for the most part, on the starboard side, all the way up to the raised shear. I did run into one problem way back here know what caused that but you can see that I've got a extra three-quarter inch piece of wood clamped on glued and clamped on there um came up a little short there it's gonna be a little bit of a you know a little bit of a bow in there when I was laying my my batten up there to here's my batten that I used to check the contour of the boat so yeah, so I just glued a piece in there, got a piece of epoxy in there now. A couple of screws to hold it in place, keep it from slipping around, and then a couple of clamps. Tomorrow we'll be able to pull that loose and, and uh, finish up uh, planing down that last last frame there to to get the, the planking on there. And if you look over here, I got my last piece on here. And I screwed up here too. Um, <laughs> I uh, when I put this last two by four in here, the one on top and the, and the aft end here, um, I forgot to taper it. Oops. Yeah, just well, lack of concentration. So what I did was I uh, I tapered it in place. I had to take the screws out to to relieve the you know get the board flat again, and then I. Got a chalk line on it and got a good chalk line snapped. And then I uh, set the circular saw just to not quite go all the way through. I mean, just a paper thin layer of wood was left. And then I went over it with the saw blade to finish it up. You can see here I had a bolt or a screw hole in here. Uh, there was one here and one up here. Um, so what I did was I glued a dowel in there and cut it out, uh, glued, it, glued it in, cut it off, it'll, it'll be fine. You can see there was a, another screw in there that left a hole, but and then one here too. But such is life. Um, otherwise, other than silly mistakes like that, it's looking pretty good. I had a couple issues here too. <laughs> one of the reasons I, I wanted to just screw the boards on instead of gluing them, screwing them on, well, so if I make a mistake, I could take it off. <laughs> oh, I could take all of this second layer off except this one because this one here, I had some fill behind it. Um, this was an area where it was a little bit uh, concave here. The planking would have been sitting in a little bit and I didn't want it, a little bit, little bit of a bow there. So I put a little fill in here. It gets better as it comes up. It gets better up here. But uh, what I did was, this is uh, epoxy mixed with uh, uh, the silica and also, not silica, eh, yeah, I guess it kind of is, it's, it's glass fibers, um, and, uh, and some wood, some bandsaw shape cuttings, shavings, sawdust. Uh, that stuff has, is kind of fibrous. I got a big uh, resaw blade in there, so those shavings or sawdust are kind of fibrous. Uh, they really, really make for a strong epoxy set. Uh, epoxy, thickened epoxy is strong enough the way it is and you put some of those fibers in there like that, uh, it really gets strong. Anyway, so that's what I've done a couple of times when I had a case like this where I had just a, a narrow gap, like a quarter inch or less and I wanted to, to bring it up. Uh, and I did that initially by you know, putting screws in here while I was putting this board on and then putting screws in here and leaving this uh, unscrewed in and then I put the, the, the adhesive, the glue, the thickened epoxy in there and then I, if I need a little clamping pressure on there, I put some clamping pressure on there. George says you can put shims in there, which of course is what we just did over on the other side. And I've done that a couple other times where I had a couple other screw ups where I made a bad measurement uh, or just missed my mark whatever but I didn't have just too terrible many of them 
there's one here and you can see here this one I had to put an inch and a half I just I put my mark on the wrong side of the line basically I put my my inch and a half uh, um, wedge or whatever it was you know that I was using to delineate the, the thickness of the of the, the hull when I, when I was laying it out on the on the lofting framing table and so I had to cut a piece out and tapered and I did it on both sides the same on both sides I'm pretty sure yes I did. did the same thing on both sides so I had to bring this out an inch and a half it was and again I don't think it's an issue I I think that the, the hardened thickened epoxy is is stronger than the, the wood itself so I don't think it's an issue whatsoever doing that and George was talking about just putting shims in there and screwing it down. So I think this is probably even a better way of doing it. But anyway, yeah, there's two of these. And, and I don't know, there might be a place or two elsewhere on the boat where I had to put, put a shim in other than that place up there. But I will, once that's cured, I will get that plane down. And then this side is done in terms of getting the, the frames ready. I mean, I might have a little adjustment to do here and there. When I'm actually putting the planking on, but tomorrow my planking stock is supposed to be in, so I have to do a little bit of a road trip to go get that. My Douglas for two by eights. And we'll see how that goes. Um, I had a little issue with this two by six here, you know, getting that on. I had to, because it, it's straight vertical here, and then it's flared out a little bit here, so I had to somehow pull this in there's no place good place to clamp i've got some deep throat clamps but that didn't do the trick either so i wound up using a lag bolt i think i said that in a video maybe not but i had to use a lag bolt a 5 16 inch lag bolt with some, some big washers on here to uh to pull that in and then once it was pulled in i screwed it in and then i drilled this out to this one was a half because i had a a half inch hole initially started but later on these are three eighths inch um i put a three eight drilled drilled the five sixteenths inch lag hole out with a three eighths inch uh drill bit and then drove a, a dowel in there glued it in so yeah that'll be fine actually we'll give you a little bit extra strength even but anyway uh so i don't know how the two by eights are going to try to lay on there i guess we'll find out but the only place that was really an issue was was up here where the where the the sweep of the bow is is, is the most uh, pronounced so yeah i guess uh other than those little issues it's going all right kind of slow going yet but yeah it is what it is it's actually not that bad and actually you know these uh planing these these bevels down really hasn't been that bad i had a lot of it done already but uh you know back here the the change in the and they you know from from the midships to back here isn't nearly as pronounced it's not like a double ender it's not like i got you know a bow and a bow you know double ender would be a lot of a lot of change both fore and aft up here is a lot of work uh, there's a lot of material that has to come off up here because those angles are quite steep but once you get to midships it's pretty much flat and so you don't have to really hardly do anything and then at the stern it, it's not too bad either but you can see all of these shavings here from the planer yeah i don't know how you would ever build a boat nowadays without a power hand plane my goodness they make such a difference yeah so if you're going to build yourself a boat like this the first thing you need to get you want to get a decent power hand plane and i am quite satisfied with my bosch i bought a dewalt too a cordless dewalt but uh this bosch does a nice job uh, one of the things i like about this bosch is you can flip this lever here and it sends the exhaust out the other side so you can go either left or right on the exhaust and it uh, keeps the exhaust 
chips flow in the right direction. DeWalt doesn't have that. It only comes out the right side. So if you're if you're going overhead, um, <laughs> it's either pointing up and, and you're getting caught in a snowstorm of chips and shavings, or it's blowing right down on you. Neither one is very very good. So, and they do make a catcher dust dust catcher for that, uh, which I suppose I need to get. But my gosh, if you're doing something like this, you know. That dust catcher would fill up every 45 seconds. But uh, for I, I do like the cordless for just if you got a board, loose board here or there, you need to shave a little off somewhere or knock a bump off here or there. And it's really handy not to have to drag a cord out there. So I, I do use the DeWalt quite a bit too. But for this for this meat removing, um, that Bosch is, has really been the ticket. All right, that's my update.